Okay, so, uh, ooh, bam, bam, bam. Um, that's all right. We're gonna make some cool stuff. I'm gonna teach you some cool stuff, as you can tell from the title of this video. This is all about doing sound effects lettering. Uh, my name is Scott Drummond. I'm a comic book artist, artist and illustrator. I do an online comic called Night Smoke. I also do like, comic book style art for board games like Marvel uh, Champions and Marvel Crisis Protocol, things like that. It's pretty fun. I have a really good time with it. But in this video, we're gonna be talking about lettering, specifically about uh, doing sound effects. The last video, I'll link that up here. That's where, that's the previous video that's all about um, like dialogue lettering and things like that. I go over a lot of different stuff that we'll not cover in this video, but I still think it's a good like starter point for lettering. But we're gonna talk about sound effects, specifically sound effects in Photoshop and on how I make my sound effects there. Uh, yeah, let's roll the intro, I guess. So yeah, it's been a minute since uh, I've uploaded. Uh, basically, things been kind of crazy in my personal life. We bought a house, moved, sold a condo, got a dog. Dog's over there. Hi, say hello, dog. She's very shy. Her name is Penny. She's a rescue. I've been really enjoying hanging out with her, but been a lot been busy with other stuff. Also, I have this whole like YouTube channel thing with Clip Studio Paint. If you haven't checked those out, please go over and check out those videos. I think they're super cool. I've been having a lot of fun with those um, and they've been uh, a blast to do. So thanks so much Clip Studio Paint for letting me do those videos. Here we go. We're going to jump into uh, Photoshop. Basically, I'm going to kind of show you how to get from something like this. this really, really basic. Just write the word kaboom to something that's kind of exciting, interesting uh, kaboom over here. It's super easy and doesn't take a lot of time. If you've never used Photoshop before, welcome to it. Uh, this is Photoshop. You're gonna go to the uh, type tool, which is this T over here. And then you are just going to click on the screen and write kaboom, K-A-B-O-O-M, and exclamation point, I don't need to spell things for you, but that's how it works. So you got this. Um, this tool over here uh, is your move tool. Uh, you can move everything around with this tool. Um, uh, so that's kind of what I'm doing here. Uh, as I select that, I, you can select that with the V tool on your keyboard as well. And next, we gotta pick a cool font because this font is, um, it's a nice font. I like this font a lot, but it's more of a design font. So I want it to look like a comic book font. Uh, in the last video, we used uh, Comic Craft fonts, but I recommended another site called Blambot. Blambot's got a lot of really awesome free fonts. And so this is one of the free fonts uh, that I um, downloaded from uh, Nate Picos' site, Blambot, called One Two Punch. So, so we'll grab the type there, make sure our layer is selected, and hit T, uh, and go up to this thing up here and select that and then scroll all the way down to uh, one, two punch, or you can also just type one, two. So there you go. And then you will get there. So now we've got this and it looks closer to um, what we've got, but it's not quite there yet, right? Like we've got, there's a lot of different variation that's happening over here, a lot of different cool stuff. Um, the first thing I'm gonna do is I am going to, um, mess with some of these sizings, right? So I'm gonna zoom in, hit the Z key, or hit this little icon down here for the zoom tool, and click to zoom in. Uh, I can hold the space bar and move around with the uh, hand key there. And then um, grab this, kind of move it around. And then with the type tool selected, I can highlight individual letters, right, to do different things with them. So I'm going to highlight this K, and I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger. Uh, you're going to want to have your character window palette window open here and you can open this by going to window uh, character over here so that will open and close that so we're going to go here and grab that and then we are going to uh, bump this up i'm going to select this and then i'm going to hit the up arrow on my keyboard a little bit to kind of make it a little bit bigger and kind of do this kind of thing. That looks pretty good. 
Uh, I'm gonna grab this A, make it slightly bigger, so that feels pretty good. Uh, I want this dash in between here, this hyphen, to be a little bit smaller. So I'm gonna, actually I'm gonna hit shift and press down, which will knock it down 10 points instead of just one point. So here you go, so one, if I just press it up and down, it'll go up and down. If I hold shift up and down, it'll go up and down 10 points, which is handy if you wanna do it quickly. I'm gonna grab this B and make that pretty large. I like, I want the B to kind of be the biggest part, kind of because it's in the middle, kind of because I feel like it's also like when you say kaboom, the B in boom feels like the biggest noise that you make. So I want that from a like conceptual standpoint, that letter to be the biggest letter because it's boom, you know, it's big. It, that's the biggest part. So we're gonna make that pretty big. That's too big, that's, that's intense. I don't need that big. All right, that feels solid. Um, make this one a little bit bigger. Maybe make this one smaller. I don't know, get crazy. Uh, basically, we're just kind of doing some size variations. We'll make this even bigger than the M. That feels pretty good. I'm gonna hit this check mark up there to commit my changes. Uh, you can also hit uh, Command Enter or Control Enter on a PC to do the same thing, commit your changes there. Uh, I think you can also just touch the uh, you know move tool, switcher tool, and that will commit your changes as well. These, this looks all really spaced out and spaced apart in comparison to this. So I'm gonna grab here and hit Command A or you can do Control A on a PC to select all. And I'm gonna go to this thing right here. This is VA with the uh, kind of arrows back and forth and set the tracking. So I'm gonna uh, click in here and kind of press down uh, until th these kind of look a little bit more squished together. I want them to be kind of squished together. Um, just because that's how I like it, I think that makes it uh, more interesting. And then that looks pretty solid. So that looks good. And then um, we're gonna grab each kind of individual letter and move them up and down a little bit. And the way I like to move these up and down is to go to the uh, this tour here, the baseline shift. If I'm gonna move the K up a little bit, so I'll go up like one or two. I'm gonna grab this A and shift it down a little bit. I'm gonna grab that hyphen and I'm gonna shift it up a little bit. Also, now that I'm seeing this hyphen, I notice that it's a little bit too close to the A for my taste. And so I'm gonna grab that A and uh, mess with the tracking to uh, kind of pull it out a little bit. So I'm gonna increase the tracking on the A so that it's a little bit further out. I'm gonna shrink that back on the, that dash there. That feels pretty good. All right, I'll make that B still a little bit bigger. I want it to be pretty big. Um, shrink that O a little bit still. And I want it to be pretty far up, so I'm gonna hit Shift up to bump that up to 10. That's too far. Shift it back down a little bit. I want this O to be down further. So that sounds fun. Uh, and then I'm gonna grab this O and I'm gonna pull it in a little bit. Pretty, pretty this M looks solid. Maybe I'm gonna bump it up a little bit. Maybe not. Maybe just move it up. Move the baseline up. I'm gonna move the baseline of the exclamation point up a little bit. Maybe make it just a little bit bigger. And that feels pretty good. I might make this K a little bit bigger also. Shift its baseline back down and pull it in a little bit tighter to that A. Just some minor changes there. And hit the check mark to commit. And that feels pretty good. Uh, this O could stand to be used a little bit closer to that M, but for the most part, like this is it. Like you just kind of move stuff around a little bit and have a fun time with that. So now that you've got it kind of set in where you want it and this is feeling pretty good to you, you can take it and give it a little bit more dimension with some uh, layer styles. 
So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change the color of this, but we'll uh, kind of grab here and uh, hit the uh, little spot up here that has you know this black square because it, it is black type. And then we can change our color to whatever we want. Um, but I'm gonna change it to like a yellow. So that color looks pretty good. And I'll hit okay. Then we're going to go to the layer and we're going to double click on the place without any type on it. If I double click on the layer name, it will let me change the layer name. If you double click on the T here, it will just try to select all of this, if you don't want. But if we double click over here, it'll pull up our layer style. We are going to mess with the strokes first. Now, we have to understand what strokes is the first one you put down, the one that's lowest in this styles stack, will be the lowest, the lowest layer on there. So the first thing I want to do is I like to have a like bright white outline around some of my um, lettering and my sound effects to really help it pop off of the colors on a page. And so the first thing I'm going to do is hit that stroke and go to here. And I'm going to make sure that it's like a 50 uh, pixel stroke here. I'll set to outside right of um, this guy and blend mode is set to normal and opacity is 100%. Now that stroke looks really thick to me, but I also know that I'm gonna have some other smaller strokes inside of that. So to make smaller strokes inside of that, you hit this little plus icon next to that stroke. So hit that guy right there, and that will make a duplicate stroke of the same kind. So you can see that each one of these is the same. We don't want that, we don't want them to be the same. That's not what our goal is here. We want this one to be kind of a fun red color. Uh, make it a little bit more orange, that looks great. Uh, because fire sounds cool, okay. Uh, we're gonna decrease the size of this a little bit and just leave a little bit of that white outline there. So maybe, you know, Mm, 36, 35. Then we can do an inner stroke by hitting, you know, go into the strokes, and the plus again, changing the position to out inside instead of outside, um, and then changing that color to be a little bit more orange, a little bit brighter, something like that, and then decreasing that size a little. Uh, last thing I'm going to do is give this a bit of an inner glow. Um, there's a couple ways to go about this. The way that I have it right now is that it has a orange glow that's set from the edge. Uh, so you can see that that glow is coming in from that edge. But what we can also do is make it kind of brighter. Make it like a yellow bright and have it come in from the center. And then you can change the size of this. So now there's a slight glow on it coming from the centers of that kind of spot. The last thing I want to do is open that type tool again. And up here at the top, there's this create warped text bit. And this is a kind of a dangerous spot because this can look really, really bad if you overdo it. But I think if you kind of can keep it pretty simple and pretty clean, you're gonna be in a good spot. So I'm gonna to go to arc upper, I'm gonna set it to horizontal. And basically what this is going to try to do is fit the text shape into this sort of arc upper shape, keeping it squared off the bottom and have an arc at the top. And you can kind of see that shape here. So I'm gonna kind of, you can make it a little bit less, and a little bit more. If you go too far, it looks really bad. So I like to keep it pretty, try to keep it pretty subtle. Um, and then I hit OK. This little bit right here on that K is bugging me, so I'm going to move that slightly off so it looks a little bit better. But then the last thing you can do is, here I'm going to turn off this one, um, is grab it and then you can hit uh, Command T or Control T on a Mac or you can go to Edit, uh, Transform and you can grab it move it into sp your spot and then you can kind of make it bigger or smaller. Um, if you hold 
Shift and Alt at the same time, it will uh, kind of zoom from the center, which is nice. Um, that's what happens when you grab this, you kind of click and drag outside. When you have this, this little icon pop up, you'll be able to rotate it. So you can rotate it a little bit and kind of put it in a fun spot here for this kaboom. One last final little bit. Sometimes you want to have your sound effects go behind your inks, right? Like you want something in front of it. So like, let's say I want, I had this and I, was, I really liked it, but for some reason I really wanted this wire to be in front of it, as well as maybe the base of this gun. Um, and that's pretty easy. Um, what you can do is go to your inks uh, right here for the ink layer, and if you have it set at monochrome, basically, like if you've if you've done the work and made it so your inks are basically just black and white with no gray, and also if you don't have anything behind it, like if it's not on white, you can command click on the icon here, and it will select all of your inks. If I do it right, there we go, and that's pretty handy. Um, so, what we will do with that information is that we will go to our cool um, sound effect and we'll make a mask. So, to make a mask, we go down, we have that layer selected, we click the mask icon in the layers palette. It says add layer mask. So we'll click that. And what that does is it basically creates a layer. Um, that references this layer, right? And then the white parts of that layer let you be able to see the layer, and the black parts of the layer will hide that layer. So you can see here that this is all white, and you can see the whole thing. If I change the color to black and I get a brush out, I can go over this and kind of hide some of that layer, right? What I want to do is select my ink layer, and now I'm going to go to the brush tool and I'm going to hold down on it and go to the pencil tool. The other way to do this is when you're on the brush tool, hit shift B and you'll be able to cycle through all the different kind of brush tools. But I want the pencil tool um, and then I'm going to hit the uh, bracket keys to make it uh, a slightly bigger one. You can also just grab here on the size and the brush settings or go up to here and hit the size here. So I'm going to make this a little bit bigger and that feels pretty good. I have the layer mask selected. I can go in and kind of brush in these little bits that I want to be gone. Now you're going to say, Scott, that looks terrible and you're right because there's one thing I have not shown you yet that the yellow is gone, but it's still filling in with the outline. And to stop it from doing that, we need to double click on that FX here to go to our layer style. And on the blending options screen, we are going to click layer mask hides effects and turn that on. Now you can see what happens is that our layer mask is hiding the uh, strokes and things, which is what we want. You can see also that I kind of spilled over a little bit here, and that's okay. Hit the X key to change my foreground color and background color so that white is what I have selected, and kind of fix that a little bit. And you can see here that the gun actually uh, would cover up here where there's not. So I'm going to hit Command D or Control D on a PC to deselect it. I also go up to Select, Deselect. And then I'm going to fill in this area with black with my pencil tool. And there you go. That's the whole tutorial, we did it. Thanks so much for watching. I'm glad you uh, stuck around to the end and enjoyed these videos. I'm gonna try and make some more of these. Uh, hopefully I do some more drawing ones. I'm gonna try and draw more of my sketchbooks so maybe I'll do some cool sketchbook ones. Uh, stick around, hit that subscribe button. I got more cool stuff. I'm just gonna leave you with a nice picture of my dog. <laughs>